Hey everyone, Surreal Canine here. Welcome back for more Disguise 3, Absence of Detention. In the last episode, we did the bios for the Disguise 1 characters, but I have made a grave error in my judgment. You see, we have missed the greatest Disguise 1 character of all, so let's go into the practice map and go over his abilities. Yeah. Yeah, it's just Aramis. <laughs> Aramis, the dude from Chapter 7 of Disgaea 1, he likes zombies a lot. Also, uh, Overlord Servant increases stats of adjacent overlords by 30%. Pretty interesting. I will uh, put those up right now, those characters. Uh, Mao and Laharl are obviously two of them. <laughs> As for his uh, spells, he learns uh, a whole bunch of uh, debuff and uh, debuff and status effect spells. Not too bad. He doesn't have any weapon fortes though. But that doesn't really matter. Let's show off his skills. <laughs> okay, that was a thing. All right. Uh, actually, let's look up the uh, the different Overlord characters while we're uh, doing this. I don't know whether or not a uh, a certain adorable Eldritch Abomination counts as an Overlord, but let's check out the others. Let's see, Pram and Zeta are both overlords. Rosalind and Prie are both overlords. Like I thought, Laharl's an overlord, so is Mao. Anyone else? Nope, that's all of them. Uh, so, Mal, Laharl, Rosalind, Prie, Pram, and Zeta. Those are the uh, six characters that uh, can that are powered up by Overlord's Servant. As for Invincible Clan, increased stats by 5% per number of zombie allies. Very bizarre. Alright, let's move on to the Disgaea 2 characters. First up, my favorite, Adele, who uh, comes in the same DLC pack as... Rosalind. Pretty great. Anyway. Adele is, obviously if you've played this guy too, a fist user. He learns six fist skills and nothing else. Fair and Square increases his damage by 30% during one-on-one -on -one battles. Pretty nice against bosses. As for his other two abilities, Mercy always leaves one HP behind when enemies are lower level. So uh, use him alongside anybody you want to uh, train up really quickly, I guess, so uh, they can get a hit against guys. As long as they do at least one damage, they will be fine. And Striker Guild increases his stats by 5% uh, times the number of allies with fists. As you might have seen in his status though, I had him equipped with Sky High because uh, it's just too useful. Anyway, all three of uh, Adele's attacks are copied straight out of Disgaea 2. They're all fire element and uh, I hear a lot of uh, bosses in this game are weak to fire, although given that Adele is a post-game character. I don't really see how that's relevant. <laughs> Vulcan Blaze, you can see I've gotten a lot of use of. That is, uh... 
Is that 1.8 billion damage I just did with that attack? That is pretty insane. <laughs> Yeah, here I show off the flavor text for, uh, well, not the flavor text, but the descriptions for the two Ivoldis, since I already uh, told you guys all about them. Because I am efficient. Next up, we have Rosalyn. <coughs> Rosalyn, just like her incarnation in Disguise 2, is a gun user, learning six gun skills and nothing else. She uh, also learns the uh, Ice series of spells up to Terra level, possibly up to Giga in Disgaea, uh, in absence of detention, ra absence of justice rather. <laughs> Her uh, primary ability, Princess's Glow, is kind of like Sapphire's Princess Glitter, but uh, it works on arrangement in the classroom rather than arrangement on the map. Also, it's a little less powerful than C Princess Glitter, but, you know, whatever. Her other two abilities, Princess's Hope and Princess's Order, are much the same way, working on the uh, units in the classroom rather than on units adjacent to her. Although, oddly, they uh, share all of the names besides Princess Glow and Princess Glitter. Another thing to note about Rosalyn is that unlike Salvatore, all of her special attacks use her hit stat rather than her attack stat, so uh, a bit more useful there, I suppose. <laughs> Kneel Before Me is interesting. It raises all three of, the, of its target's offensive stats by 10%. Attack... All four offensive stats, excuse me. Attack, Int, Hit, and Speed. Speed, obviously, for the uh, sake of fists and guns. <laughs> That's usually not something you see with... Uh, actually, I don't think that was a thing in Disgaea 2, either. So, yeah. Rose Liberation is, of course, her, uh, her ultimate skill. It's a thing. Very Golden Sun-like in terms of the uh, effects going on here. <laughs> Rosalyn summons Judgment. It's super effective. I only even... that's not even the same series. <laughs> I'm mixing up my video game references, guys. How about that? So yeah, just comparing uh, Sapphire and Rosalind in terms of their abilities here. Because they really are pretty similar. As for Tink, uh, Tink is an abomination against all of nature. <laughs> He's a flying type unit. He's got pretty high speed, although not as high as his blue form had in Disgaea 2. He uh, favors attack and hint. Uh, attack and hit over attack and int. Yes, attack and hint. Arrow's change uh, increases his weapon stats when he magic changes with a girl. Peeping glasses increases the bonus. Uh, of glasses by 20% and power of Eros increases his own stats by 20% per adjacent female ally. Uh, yeah, he's a dirty frog, all right. <laughs> Obviously having Sapphire adjacent to him in particular will power him up even more, as you can see here. In any case. Tink's ability are as follows, Sonic Roll, Nail Bat, and Goodbye Tink. The same three uh, 
skills he learned other he learned otherwise in Disguise 2. He also learns a, a target lock of all things and a, a bunch of status ailment spells. Sadly, Sonic Roll does not make the doo doo sound effect. Probably because of lawyers. I'm not really a big fan of lawyers. <laughs> Nail bat is the, about the same as usual as it usually is. As is goodbye Tink, uh, except goodbye Tink here leaves Tink with one HP rather than zero. So, uh, yeah. Kaboom! <laughs> so yeah, that was a thing. As for uh, Tink's magic change form, uh, he magic changes for a spe to a spear, and I will just. Yeah, we are not even going to talk about this. <laughs> I don't think I need to mention what that spear looks like. So yeah, I will just let the results uh, speak for themselves. Back in the base panel you go. Alright, next up we have Hanako, uh, Adele's sister. Sadly we do not get adult Hanako from the Disgaea 2 DLC, but that is fine. She uh, has some pretty interesting uh, abilities. Uh, Skill count increases stats by 3% times the number of units damaged using specials, which is an interesting way of putting it. Super Guts lets her uh, survive a death blow if her HP is max, and uh, I didn't get to read the other one. Oh, and uh, that skill, that ability, uh, increases the range of her magic change. Pretty interesting. Uh, she's an int-based monster, definitely. Her attacks use int. And she learned a bunch of status spells that uh, I didn't get a chance to read. I think they're stat buffs. Hanako sure does love her vase, and I'm sure that attack animation would look a lot more impressive if uh, she was surrounded by enemies. <laughs> Alright, next up we have her uh, magic chain skills, and Hanako... No, we have her other skill first. Because I'm just not paying attention to the video. <laughs> Let 
Alright. Uh, next up, Hanako's uh, Adele, you are you are not in the Going Homers Club. Get, the, get back in the base panel. Rosalind thankfully stopped being equipped with Tink, so uh, we can uh, steal Hanako's jar. Sure. <laughs> That's a thing. It counts as a gun! As such, she's a decent enough match for uh, Rosalind, I guess. <laughs> kind of silly considering uh, Taro was the one that really liked Rosalind. But, you know, whatever. Pokemon Sun and Moon come out in two days from the uh, time of this recording. It's... a thing. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it, but at the same time, I don't really know how much time I will have to play it. I mean, I know Thanksgiving is coming up, but... Uh, got a lot of stuff on my plate. Between this, uh, this Let's Play, uh, the RPG I am running, the... The stuff, with the stuff and the stuff, and all the stuff. Next up, we have Taro, who is Adele's brother rather than Rozzy's slave. Does that mean he got over his crush? Who knows? His abilities are Milk, which increases his attack and hit when he is defending. Obviously, he's a physical monster weapon user. Natural Defense, which automatically faces toward the attacker uh, when he is defending, I think. And Metal Wall, which uh, prevents his counterattacks count from going down when he's defending. Pretty amazing! He is, like, the perfect tank. Kind of. Not that tanks have very much value in the Disgaea post-games, but, I mean, you know. <laughs> it's a thing, I guess. So uh, let's check out his uh, special skills. Long Longhorn. Um, apparently Taro is a land shark or something, I don't know. Also caved. There, I said it. <laughs> Crybaby attack! Just swing those fists around and around until you get something done. That boy, Taro. Here we go, dude. And then he accidentally takes the other guy out. <laughs> oh well. Taro's third skill. is apparently more caved. <laughs> but this time with his horns at their natural size. Okay. Either that or it was some kind of suplex, which is just pretty awesome in general. <laughs> Given the name of the attack, actually, I'm kind of led to believe it is it's some kind of suplex. Also, uh, he's a cow axe! Moo! <laughs> Apparently that milk was carbonated. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. And then lunch nightmare, what?
And then Rosalind gets an afro. And then she gets a top... What? <laughs> so bizarre. Taro, you are a very silly cow. Next up, we have Yukimaru, who is a ninja who says Zam too much. <laughs> she, uh, she likes her swords. Uh, but copy ninjutsu copies the ability of the first unit she defeats in battle. Could be handy, maybe. Greatest Kunoichi increases the evasion from attacks from the side by 30%. Pretty neat. Also, hi, Fuka. You are going to be our demo man. <coughs> Maybe. No, instead we are just going to, uh... Oh, apparently Yukimaru learns a bunch of ice spells. Good to know. Also, uh, Yuki uh, learns four sword skills and nothing else. Six in the in a absence of detention. As I've said before with a lot of these unique characters. What am I doing here? I I'm not even I'm not sure what that was for. Maybe it was for nothing. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Yuki's uh, third ability is Fencer Guild, which is kind of like Striker Guild but with fences. <laughs> We got strikes, lances, and fences. Good to see, and all the potatoes of the salad. Anyway, let's show off her uh, her ninja arts here. Nada Regin uh, is like a ninja log, but with a snowman. Pretty neat. Setsugeka is. Uh, is the uh, renaming of uh, Setsugetsuka, which uh, the two names are very easy to mistake one for one another when they're written in uh, in Japanese, <laughs> either in hiragana or katakana. I don't know which is the correct spelling, but you know, whatever. It's ice. Deal with it. Finally, we have Midare Hubuki, which is. Pretty cool, and also kind of reminds me of uh, Xuan Ya Yang Zhang Quan, or however you're supposed to pronounce that from Live Alive. Yeah, I can definitely see the similarities there. And then she finishes it off with a whirlwind, which is not very Live Alive, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Okay, and that is actually all of the Disgaea 2 characters, so we are going to uh, carry on and talk about the Disgaea 4 characters, who are exclusive to this game, obviously, since uh, Disgaea 4 was not out yet at the time of the original release. Fuka learns Fist, Axe, and Gun skills, six of them each. Uh, time of Awakening recovers HP and increases her attack by 50% the first time she gets KO'd, so... Uh, yeah, she can take a lethal hit from somewhere, and then BOOM! Revenge Throw apparently triples the damage caused by a Prinny explosion. I'm assuming that's uh, her throwing Prinnies and not uh, her getting thrown, considering uh, she doesn't explode. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it is her getting thrown. Because uh, that was pretty... Uh, that's pretty standard for a pretty explosion, actually. Let's go, Bombastic. Obviously, she's a bit more uh, pixelated than in her native game, but that is fine. I mean, this is only Disgaea 3. <laughs> 
Finally, Sweets Powered increases all of her stats by 50% whenever she eats a Sweets. Uh, most healing items that only heal HP are considered Sweets. Uh, they probably have this lollipop icon next to them. Excuse me. So yeah, that is Hookah. Let's show off her other two uh, special skills, though, before we move on to the greatest character of all time. I can do anything in my dream. This is dream power. Pissed ten thousand percent. It's the attack of the jealous rock star, <laughs> or maybe she's a pop idol. I don't know. That seems like more of her thing, I don't know. Hey, dude. Here we go, dude. Don't fall in love with me, dude. The Disco Pretty Squad is getting on her nerves. And then the Prinnies fall onto the other Prinnies and cause a Prinny explosion, which causes the Prinnies to explode, although in a different manner from normal. Anyway, <laughs> Pretty Kaiser Double X. She uh, is embracing the prettiness, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> that Pringer is m is a uh, much bigger than normal. <laughs> Her dad must have made some adjustments, or maybe that was her. I don't know. It's a thing. <clears throat> Finally, let us talk about the dis the greatest Disgaea character of all time. Desco, the future final boss. <laughs> She magic changes to an axe. She is a very uh, offensive type character. Uh, and her abilities are pretty great too. Yeah, Gaze of Fear. That is... Uh, that could be very good for uh, strategic purposes. She learns star magic up to the Terra level, and all of her special skills are also star elemental. Pretty great. Sadly, she uh, does not have the ability that makes her so overpowered in uh, Disgaea 4, but I mean, that's fine. I still love her. <laughs> She's just so adorable. Uh, getting some audio uh, cutting out here a little bit. But I mean, I guess that's kind of a consequence of the uh, capture card I'm using more than anything else. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> and then laser breath. Woohoo! <laughs> Good times, Desco. Good times. I can do anything in my dream. Let's magic change. She turns into an axe. Which I'm pretty sure she was a sword in Disgaea 4, but I mean, you know, whatever. Tyrant Ball is a very silly attack, and also kind of sort of a pun. So yeah, we, uh, we get a bunch of Usatakos, and uh, 
do their thing. Which I think Usataco is something like a rabbit octopus, which I guess sort of makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> this game is the first time hearing of it. Finally, we have full Desco Burst, which has a very weird area of effect, but I mean, what else is new? Combining Eldritch Power! <laughs> So yeah, that's Dusko. Let's have Aramis uh, finish these guys off. And finally, what I am going to do is, because the DS gentlemen are incredibly lame as far as uh, unlockable characters go, like Prism Red levels of lame, they don't even have any special skills, uh, we're just going to hop into the detention room and uh, check them out. No, I said the detention room past me. Get it right. Let's go into status, and here they are, all nine of them. Pretty Mask has heavy stance. Cannot be lifted, but stats increased by 20%. Gorillion has Soul Crush. 50% of damage dealt. Also deals damage to SP. Chiron has Divine Killer. Damage dealt to human type units increased by 25%. And I knew I saw Divine Killer somewhere else. Beyond X has Pretty Motion. Damage taken from male units decreased by 50%. Bowtie has Macho Splendor. Damage taken from female units decreased by 50%. Goro has Dark Blood. Stats increased by 5% per ally monster unit on map. Also, Goro has some very high uh, resistances, I just noticed. Seto-O has Darkness Pact. Stats increased by 3%, but HP cannot be healed by magic. You need to use items to heal him. Pauline has Revival. When HP is under 25%, HP recovers fully at the end of turn, which I think I have also seen on another character somewhere. Bl and Satina has Blood Insanity. Damage dealt increased by 30% when target HP is under 50%. So yeah, that's the G at DS, gentlemen. None of them have any weapon fortes or unique skills, so, uh... Yeah. I would not recommend using them. <laughs> so yeah, that's everybody, and... Next time on Disguise 3, Absence of Detention, we are going to do the bios for the, for the Nipponichi cameos. See y'all then. Bye bye